The other night I had a dream, and it was wonderful. We all dream, right? But I'd never had a dream like this one before. I won the lottery. (laughs) Now, the jackpot was the small one. It was only $40 million. But I remember being handed that check and thinking all kinds of wonderful thoughts to myself. This money is going to change my life. Now my life is going to be problem-free. I'm going to be happy the rest of my life. Of course, I'm going to donate 10% of my winnings to the church. When I realized I'd won that money, it was the happiest day of my life. At the next service, we're going to make those words bigger. Somehow they lost the impact I thought they would have. I was in a, ta- a state of total bliss during this, uh, this dream when all of a sudden I was rudely uh, woken up by my dog Jake. He was barking like Lassie used to bark when Timmy would fall down a well. And with that the dream was over. No $40 million, nothing like that. But I'll bet all of us have had a dream like that, or maybe we were daydreaming and thinking about winning the lottery. Uh, we've seen some of those five hundred, six hundred, seven hundred thousand uh, dollar jackpots, and thinking, "Boy, that money could go a long way. It could buy me peace and happiness. No more problems. No more trials. No more stress. No more putting money away for a rainy day. It'd be like living on vacation every single day." A person once said, our attitude about money and riches reveals an awful lot about himself. In our gospel lesson today, we hear of someone who referred or revealed very much about their greedy attitude. And this is a a person who's very bold. A man calls out to Jesus, teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. Now, that's striking to me because this guy's telling Jesus what to do. A lot of guts there. He wants his inheritance. We don't know what it is because the lesson doesn't tell us. Maybe it had something to do with land or cattle or money. And maybe that man thought that his generous inheritance was going to take place or take care of every problem that he'd ever had. It would guarantee him a happy and contented life. What we do know is that he wanted Jesus to step in and help him to get what he thought belonged to him. Now, the rabbis of Jesus' day were often called on to settle these kinds of disputes. But Jesus is no ordinary teacher. His mission is not to be a mediator between one person and another. His mission is to be a mediator between Almighty God and you and me. And so Jesus doesn't get involved in this dispute, but he does issue a stern warning to his disciples. He says, watch out. Be on your guard against all kinds of greed. A man's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. Jesus kind of has a teaching opportunity here. And so he tells the story about a rich man. This guy is lottery rich. His land has produced a good crop. His barns are overflowing. It would seem as though his good life has gotten much, much better. Now, you and I know where our blessings come from, right? A generous and loving God who provides everything for us. And at the end of the sermon today, we're going to confess uh, Luther's explanation to the first article of the Apostles' Creed. Uh, Those of you who went through Lutheran confirmation probably had to memorize that explanation. Do you remember uh, that it said or taught that God gives us life, but then he gives us so much more? You all remember how it started? He gives me clothing and shoes and food and drink and house and home and wife and children and land and animals and all I have and how he richly and daily provides all that we need for this life. The rich man in Jesus' story could have bowed his head and given thanks to God. He he could have even taken some of his riches and maybe shared it with neighbors who needed a little extra help. 
but not this greedy man. He says, this is what I'll do. In the Greek language, he is literally saying, I will dialogue or talk to myself. He doesn't consult with his family or friends. He doesn't ask Almighty God for direction and help. He goes on and he says, I'll tear down my barns and build bigger ones. And there I'll store all my grain and all my goods. It's interesting because this rich man has put away enough for 100 rainy days. And yet, it's still not enough. Verse 19 of our text could be translated like this. Self, take it easy. Eat, drink, and be merry. So get the picture. There's a rich man sitting all alone, no one with him. He's lottery rich, and he believes that he'll never have another problem. His lot in life is peace, happiness, and success. Is that the end of the story? No, there's a little more that Jesus added there, right? The rich man is suddenly confronted by a visitor, an uninvited visitor, God himself. And God calls the rich man a fool. Not because the man is lacking in intelligence or anything like that. He's a fool because he thought he could find security and happiness in all of his riches and all of his stuff. He was foolish because he had his heart set on the wrong thing. You remember the words of Jesus, what good is it for a man to gain the whole world but what? Lose his own soul. You see, that's what makes any person a fool. I told uh, some of the people over in the kitchen this morning that I was going to teach you all how to catch a monkey. How many of you have ever needed to do that? Well, one person so far. You probably know what I'm going to share then, don't you, Tyler? No, no idea. Well, uh, in some countries, if you want to catch a monkey, what you do is you get a gourd, and you cut a small hole in the top, and then you put rice in it. Uh, we're going to pretend this is our gourd for the day. Now, as you can see with this cup, if I just put my hand in it like that, no problem. But if I put my hand in it and make a fist, then my hand is pretty well stuck in there. If I let the fist out, then I'm free. Apparently, when a monkey finds a gourd full of rice, he sticks his hand in it, he grabs the rice, but then he realizes his hand is stuck. But the monkey doesn't let go of the rice. He's got it. He's not giving it up. And so rather than pull his hand out and maybe figure out this could be a trap, he continues to hold, keep his fist tight until someone comes along and captures him. That's the sad story of the monkey. We don't... Uh, we don't want that to happen to us. Your phrase for the day is this, don't let selfishness and greed make a monkey out of you. <laughs> See, Jesus in this parable teaches something really important, all humor aside. He teaches that our heart's desire is to be rich toward God. And here's the paradox of it all. We become rich toward God when we recognize how poor we are. Often in our um, worship services, we begin our confession of sins with the words, I, a poor, miserable sinner. And the word poor there is not used simply by accident. We have nothing to offer or to give to the, the giver of every good and perfect gift. He owns everything. We can't offer him a perfect life. Could any of us stand before God and say, I've never had a lustful thought in my life. I've never said one unkind word about anyone in my whole life. I've always loved my neighbors as I should. The truth is that we sin daily, right? And we break God's commands. And foolishly, we sometimes fear, love, and trust in other people or things rather than the one true God. Now, let's contrast the actions of the rich man in the parable with Almighty God. You see, the rich man hoarded all of his riches, but not your Father God. You come into this place every Sunday empty-handed, and he fills those hands to overflowing. 
full forgiveness for all of your sins, a, a peace that passes all understanding, power to run the race of faith all the way to the finish line. You have the Holy Spirit who works through word and sacraments to strengthen your faith and enable you to hold on even tighter to your Lord and Savior. Here in this place is water to wash you. Here in this place is bread and wine that feeds you. You come into this house today poor, but you leave rich. Rich in the blessings of the God who loves you completely. How rich are you? How loved are you? I love these words from Romans chapter 8. Paul wrote, If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things, everything we need? The rich man shared with no one, but God has shared with you and with the entire world. And the Father did this out of love. He shared his only Son with you and me. The Son gave up the riches of heaven for a life of poverty. Jesus owned no property. He did not amass a fortune in the carpentry business. How blessed you and I are that Jesus wasn't interested in gathering up treasures for himself. Instead, as Paul wrote to the Corinthians, for you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich... Yet for your sakes he became poor, so that you through his poverty might become rich. When Jesus was nailed to that cross, he was without a doubt a poor, miserable sinner. He became sin for us. He paid our sin debt to God in full. And now, through faith in your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, you have become rich. You are rich in God's forgiveness and love. You are rich in the fruit of faith that the Holy Spirit produces in you. You are rich with an eternal inheritance that can never perish or spoil. Now don't misunderstand. There is absolutely nothing wrong with having a lot of money or a lot of good stuff. Well, that's something you can raise your hand and say, thank you, God, for the blessings, the generosity that you have given to me. But our hope in this life and the next is not dependent on our bank account or how big the screen is on our television. We don't need to win the lottery to become rich. And peace and happiness are not dependent on how much we have. Money does not promise a problem-free life. Our generous God has made you and me rich in forgiveness, in peace, and in hope. In fact, we're so rich that we can leave here today and we can share some of our riches with the people that we meet, the people maybe who could use our help. That's the good news for the day, my friends. You are rich in God. Amen. May the peace of God that passes all understanding keep our hearts and minds through faith in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.